On a day that an exhibition opens, you don't sleep the night before. I mean, it's just, you've been working for this for months to happen and you don't sleep the night before. And we start very early in the morning. I probably get there, the museum, a little bit after seven o'clock and just walk and make sure that the objects all look the way that they're supposed to look. And um, we often have then a breakfast. Um, and that breakfast may be for the press. Sometimes we start with the press and I walk them through the exhibition, trying to give them highlights of the show, trying to tell them a little bit of background about the themes of the show, try to get them excited, give them little sound bites that they need, talk in very short sentences so that they can actually quote me. Um, and then we may have a short break and then we'll have different groups that want to come in. So it may be the financial backers, the sponsors for the exhibition. That they, and one finds as though the, the trick is you have to make the sound as spontaneous as possible, but you have to hit the same points over and over and over again. I think by the time an exhibition is put to bed, you may have gone through the same spiel 50 to 60 times, and each time it has to sound like the most spontaneous thing you've ever done. But part of it is you've just been dying to present this material, so you'll, you'll it comes out. I mean, it, it's not work, but just, Sometimes you're sitting there in the middle of an interview thinking, have I covered that already? But that's that's just part of the discussion. And then we will have perhaps, a, I go back to my office, try to go through email. I mean, constantly looking at email during the day. Um, and then we may go back because then different people come out of town. They may want to see related objects to what's in the exhibition. Collectors who come out of town, scholars who come from out of town. We may take them into storage and we'll look at works of art that they want to see, discuss with them, get their opinions about things that they might be interested in. And then the events unfurl for the evening in which again, many presentations where we then go through the spiel for assembled group of museum members, for instance, and we'll go through and talk about the show and then again, walk them through an exhibition, presenting the highlights. If I'm working with an artist, it's always a dialogue between me and the artist. So I'm in, I actually play the role of interviewer in, in those cases, because I'm there to highlight the artist, not to highlight me, I'm there to highlight the artist. If it's more traditional art, it's trying to get people to think back, what could this context have been? Trying to create that kind of background, create a scene so people can imagine that they're not just seeing it in the museum gallery, that they might be able to contextualize it, understand where did it come from? Why was it made? And why are we presenting it in this particular situation? And then sometimes there are parties until two o'clock in the morning. My last exhibition, we had a party until two in the morning and the artist was terrific. This was an artist, Takashi Murakami, who's uh, quite well known for his very pop art, but also a lot of traditional references in his art and um, making sure that his team was all taken care of. Um, but he was just really on for the evening and, and just maintaining making sure that people got to meet him who wanted to meet him, making photo opportunities that he needed. And then we started all over again the next day. It was just, and for usually for an opening, that will go on for three or four days like that, uh, where we're constantly interacting with different groups, trying to get them excited, trying to create the buzz, um, trying to build upon all the sort of groundwork that we've laid for the exhibition.